Hey guys, it's Sarcastic Chorus, and it's day two of Future Week, and we're kicking it off with three more episodes today. Let's begin. Guidance, the one where Steven is suddenly fallible. Story opens with everyone's favorite overused child therapist Steven at a pizza shop talking to a big surprise amethyst, who reveals that all the uncorrupted gems are being put to work serving the community. Why you ask? Eh, something about integration. And screw the teenagers desperate for entry level work. Kingler is cutting pizza now. No idea what her actual job in gem society was supposed to be, but whatever. Probably makes a killer Krabby Patty pizza though. Secret Service Rubies show up? So they went from being bodyguards to being bodyguards? How is that an improvement? Oh, okay, so they, they do look adorable in the suits though. Proud of herself, Amethyst takes not the center of attention Steven to see the other gems. Blue Lace Agate is a carnival game, okay. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh, I loved Rainbow Sherbert. The Quartzes have apparently taken over the boardwalk. Up in the sky, oh look, stock Republican Andy is letting the pilot pilot. Not sure if that's a job, but you do what you're made to do. Suddenly, Care Steven sees the problem here. Isn't this all a little on the nose? Wow, didn't have those objections when he gave Spinel to the diamonds. Ice Pokemon and a Yeti are working the ice stand. Steven has a different idea though. Uh, I don't know about this. God damn, we're doing this plot. Just give them a job that isn't someone else's. Maybe suggest they try ice skating. That should be in their wheelhouse. He keeps going on, Steven. Stop playing God and just introduce them to Fortnite. Apparently aliens love it. Moving on, we find out Lil Laramar has a kink. Human screams are my favorite of the Earth's delights. I want to hear the human screams forever. People say this character is racist. I just can't believe it's not Bimo. Next, again, give them hobbies, not jobs. Hang back to the pizza place, this happens. Till then, I guess my work here is done. No, bad Steven, stop breaking the fourth wall. Things start falling apart because of course they do. KO creator Snowflake sucks at flying. <laughs> oh no, they killed Rad. Realized he messed up, Steven goes to Amethyst for help. She's annoyed that he didn't listen to her ideas. Why would you want my help? You haven't liked any of my ideas today. Um, when does Steven ever listen to anyone else? I don't know why I thought I could just take it over like that. Because it's what the show always has you do and it waited till now to make it a problem. They make up and become smoky something, but over by the rides, Neo is not down for these kinds of screams. And if you know what I'm referencing, follow me, we're now best friends. Slow Smoky can't get there fast enough, Gollum speak happens. I can save the universe, I can save a roller coaster, but saving the universe took time. <laughs> time? You save the universe with a comeback. Get out of here with that shit. Rose power kicks in and they start bionic man running. Steven's powers, as the plot demands. Save everyone, things wind down and Steven admits he was wrong. Life goal Amethyst is happy and wants to be a career counselor. And because we can't have Steven be totally wrong, Ice Beamo discovered she likes giving out toys to children. And she likes their happy screams. The lesson today, stay in your lane and don't fight your programming. Unless you're a pearl, then avoid programming at all costs or else the KKK might start supporting us. But all's well that ends well. Oh no, we forgot Onion! F*** him, he's probably the Antichrist. Episode 4, Rosebuds. Even dead, my mom still ruins everything. Story begins with It's Complicated Steven trying to move his mother's painting somewhere else because yikes, she did some messed up stuff. I mean, all that stuff she did, yeah, that's definitely gonna get you taken off the wall. Suddenly gets dark outside, so it's either an eclipse or aliens. Steven, greetings. I was kind of right. So the Zoomins are here to visit. Ditching them at the Orgy Greg is still not welcome. Guess they're still pissed they didn't get that Mr. Universe D. Shorty Squad heads up to the ship where we find out the Paradise is still a paradise and the Quartz and Humans are now in charge. Also, stay in your cast, Holly Blue is still here. Chill out, Holly Blue, you know you want to. I give up. No one answers to me and I answer to no one. Rip, evil gem remnant fanfiction. Party girl Amethyst hangs out with her old frat, so while she's off having fun, Steven is freed to get emotionally scarred. <laughs> well, this won't be traumatic at all. So meet the three new Rose Quartzes, Valley, Genki, and Dead Ringer. It's like we were bubbled, but now we're like not bubbled? She's a stoner, got it. No idea what to do, Steven invites them to dinner. This way, he won't be the only one uncomfortable. But speaking of being uncomfortable, I haven't had this many exes show up at once since Hi, how are you? 
I could feel the rest of my hair falling out. Run, man, your game is too strong. Morian nonsense? You take this food stuff and you put it in your face hole like this. There's humans on the ship. Like, why is this shocking to her? Looks like my ex Pearl is also struggling. Oh, if I could have had a Pearl, I would have wanted her to be just like you. Do it. So this is obviously too much for the gems to handle, so the team goes to the bathroom to freak out. Being stuck with your mom, lover, leader's carbon copies will do that to you. Making things worse, Steven keeps running his mouth. What? No, you're, you're totally welcome here. You, you should stay over. For the night? Slumber party! I'm so dead. <laughs> Sleeping with his moms, Steven is incredibly uncomfortable, but despite everything, he still finds a way to dig himself deeper in the hole. Yeah, I wish you could just stay here forever. The dead ringer has to be insecure, but she's not totally wrong. You guys take a hint? He doesn't want us to be here. Running away, they try to leave, but Steven finally comes clean about how awkward it is being around them. The three also revealed that they are just a little bit bitter about being locked away because of Pink. But then they decide that they're pretty much siblings, because Rose created all of them and they all suffered because of her. Though by that logic, Jasper would also be considered a sister, and maybe even Amethyst. You know, in fact, almost all the gems made on Earth would be considered siblings. steven has got a big family, I suppose. The now content Roses leave, while everyone ignores the obvious solution of them just shape-shifting their faces just a little bit when they're around the main crystal gems, but still a better faith than getting shipped off to the farm. Episode 4, Volleyball, My Mom Beat the Help. Story begins with Steven putting his spit on people. Good thing he isn't a real doctor, else this would be considered malpractice. Oh, better hydrate, boy. So the abused Pink Pearl shows up to Steven's office looking to get fixed. The spit doesn't work for once. So Dr. Mario is going to have to get creative. Asking the obvious question of how she got injured, Leia Haircut Pearl tells him that besides not remembering the last 8,000 years, being controlled by White, no consequences, she drops a bomb that getting worse all the time Pink was the one that hurt her. Strap in folks, it's time to knock Pink down what yet another peg. This gets Steven to be a little rosy as he realizes that he has even more of his mom's mistakes to fix. Dealing with this, Steven rushes to Ref Pearl for help. Replacement Pearl is not very comfortable around her original. It's just that it reminds me so much of Pink. She used to give silly little names to everything. She was so funny like that. You slut! Looks like someone still got it bad. She, she said with a straight face as she keeps Rose's bathwater hidden in her room. They name Little Miss One-Eye Volleyball because... What about... Volleyball? Wow, that's lame. That's also not what they sound like. Nine years of playing has taught me that much. Rose was a Saint Pearl, still thinks that White was the one that broke her. About to snap Steven is avoiding the whole subject. The two Pearls are being catty, talking about age, energy, who knew Pink better. These two are gonna hook up, aren't they? They head to the reef, the place where Pearls are made. Minimizing abuse volleyball tells Steven he doesn't need to do so much. It's not trivial. Soon, we'll all be able to put the past behind us. Oh, so this is more about ignoring your mom than helping her. How healthy. Also, better you than Pearl is being condescending. Don't worry, Volleyball. I'll be right here holding your hand. Walking through the boutique, we get to see a bunch of accessories and find out more Toys Volleyball got presents from Pink. But that's nothing. Toys are temporary. Emotional scars last forever. Speaking of which, the AI tells us Volleyball is fine physically, but mentally holds on to the scar. Did Pink ever meet anyone she didn't traumatize? Faking at volleyball is pretending that she's okay when she's obviously not. She also corrects Pearl saying that Pink was the one that did this. Defending the abuser, Pearl doesn't believe it, revealing that back in the day, spoiled brat Pink was constantly throwing tantrums and had this power that definitely wasn't a ghostly whale. And within arm's reach, Volley just happened to be too close when she freaked out one time. Doesn't believe in character development, Pearl calls Volley a liar. Rage mode activates and we get to see what Pink used to be like. Actually abused Gem Volley cowers, and it was at this moment Pearl realized she knew less about Pink than she thought. Again, the AI decides the Pearls are nothing but trouble and tries to mind wipe them. Trapped in a confined space again, Pearl tells Victim Volley she's sorry for not believing in her. They both realize they've been making excuses for their lover slash master, and have never stopped hurting because of what she did. Yeah, I'm tearing up a little bit. <laughs> this is great stuff. They fuse together into Pearlette, and they start tearing through the facility. Animation is engaging for once, breaking out they return to Earth, and Princess Pearl gives a beautiful speech about how together the Pearls finally can understand Rose. Honestly, this episode is wonderful. I'll keep this short. I loved 
two of these episodes. Bali and Rosebuds are easily in my top tier Steven Universe episodes. Guidance isn't bad, and I was honestly really happy to see more of the other gems, but the plot itself with Steven just creating a situation doomed to fail was contrived and I expect a little bit more out of this show, especially after having such a strong opening act. Rosebuds is probably peak Steven Universe comedy for me, and that might be my sixth sense of humor. It's a super uncomfortable situation for the characters, but I really like it. It's just nice to see all the other gems being on the same level for a change, not being able to handle the Rosebuds. Greg's reaction was definitely the highlight. Watching Steven, whose relationship with his mom is tenuous at best, having to confront these carbon copies of her is just gold. I also really enjoyed the characterization for each of the Rosebuds, though I do think that these two end up stealing all the spotlight, and the third one exists just to look exactly like Rose. Steven learning that the Rosebuds carry guilt and negative feelings towards his mom was also a good development, as they have every right to be angry, but they wouldn't exist without Ping, so it makes the whole relationship rather complicated, something which Steven is all too familiar with. Now moving on to volleyball. I think this episode will go down as one of my all-time favorite episodes. Sure, it has its share of dumb moments, volleyball being the biggest one, but I guess PP would be too childish even by Steven's standards. But the rest of the episode, again, is fan Fantastic, and I can't say any more than that. It does play more into the pink doing bad things trend we keep seeing, but at this point, I've accepted it, and just waiting for her reveal that she was the evil mastermind this whole time. But the ending is beautiful, the message is good, Steven's rage mode is a bit iffy, but I'm so eager to see where they go from here. Thank you all for watching, this has been Sarcastic Chorus. Please like, share, and subscribe. I've started a Patreon. I'm still playing around with the tier system, but if you'd like to get early access to my videos or catch my reaction videos to all the shows I've been reviewing, Patreon is the place to do it. Sign up, donate what you can, every little bit helps. All right, peace out, Sarcast fans, and you all stay honest.